praise Him right here today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I'm glad I serve a God that knew where I was. He knew what I needed. Hallelujah. Amen. If you don't know Him today, I want to let you know you don't have to understand it. You don't have to know all that you're doing. You just got to go to Him. Hallelujah. You have, we have a God. You don't have to know all the steps. There's no procedure. But you just give Him your life and He'll take care of the rest. Amen. Let's sing it one more time. I can tell you the time. I can show you the plan. Where the Lord saved me. saved you. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That ought to excite you when you think about where you, where you were when the Lord saved you. Kind of, kind of relive it a little bit. Relive that experience just a little bit, just for a moment. Think about where you were, not only physically and geographically, but think about where you were in your life. Think about where you were in your sins. Amen. When the Lord came by and He reached out and He touched your life and He saved you and He changed you. Amen. Some of you probably can remember what the preacher was preaching. Probably you can, some of you can probably remember the song that was being sung. Amen. Maybe you can remember, amen, what it was, the Sunday school class and who the Sunday school teacher was. Oh, you need to relive that moment. Amen. Remember, amen, when the Lord saved you. Hallelujah. Amen. I can't understand it all. I can't understand it all, but I'm thankful that the Lord chose to save me. How about you? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tonight, service 630. Come out and be in the house of the Lord for service tonight at 630. Amen. Also, there'll be choir practice 545 tonight. 630 service, 545 tonight. And uh, for choir practice, 2 o'clock this afternoon will be his nursing home service. And if you can, we really need your help at the nursing home service. So any of you that can... can uh, on your way home from lunch, just swing by the nursing home service for 30, 45 minute service there. And it's a, a help to them and a benefit to the those that's there in the nursing home. So I think you'll enjoy that. All right? Man, please do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, it's wonderful to be in church today. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grab your Bibles if you would. Hallelujah. Been talking in our Sunday school class about sin. And I tell you, years ago I came across a book that said, uh, Whatever Became of Sin. Because sin has really grown to be extinct. You know that? And uh, we need to be, we need to be clear. I think that we need to be clear. The church needs to be more clear on what is sin. And it, not just our church, but all churches. Because now we're living in a day, you know what, if you say, well, this church says it's sin, 
you go across the street and that church says, well, it's not really sin. You know, it's, you know, it's, you probably shouldn't do it, but that's, it's not sin. Right. Then you go a little farther down the street and they say, yeah, you can do it and that's okay. So it's, it's, it's I'm all mixed up, isn't it? Hey, man, we need to realize, hey, amen, that sin is serious. Sin is serious. Amen. amen. Praise God. And, and uh, how important it is that we live a life above sin and that we can be free from sin in our life. Amen. Look with me to the book of Hebrews today. The book of Hebrews chapter 4. And we'll try to preach to you for just a little bit today. Tonight in the night service, uh, Lord willing, Brother Aaron Swafford will be with us in our service tonight. Preaching, they're passing through on their way to Oklahoma. And so uh, they'll be stopping in for tonight's service. And uh, look forward to having the Swafford family always enjoy them. Held us a great revival and and uh, they did a great job. We're looking forward to that. Brother Aaron Swafford, okay? If you can, come out and be in the service tonight. Man, the book of Hebrews chapter 4. And uh, let me, let's begin reading. Amen. Verse 1, let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith within them that heard it. For we which have believed do not enter into rest, as, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, that they shall enter into my rest, although the works be, were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. In this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. Drop down with me a little bit if you would. There remaineth therefore a rest, verse 9, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that entered, that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall short. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. I'm sorry. Amen. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and the joints, and the marrow, and the discern of the thoughts, and the intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened under the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The last verse there, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Tell you what, man, the throne of God. I'm going to talk to you, if I can, the throne of grace. A throne of grace. Amen. When you think of a throne, what do you think of? You think of power, you think of authority, you think of some king or nobility. Some deity of such that would sit on a throne. I find it interesting when you read in the, in the scripture about the throne of God. Read how it's described. And those that have pictured and tried to describe for us with words. And to, for us to picture what the throne of God would look like. And how it would be represented. Sounds to me like it's a, an awesome and glorious place to be ushered before the throne of God. To be at and be before 
God's throne. Hallelujah. Amen. God's throne. What a marvelous thought to think that anybody would ever have the privilege to go before the throne of God. Amen. Praise God. And when you think about what, what the throne of God represents, all of the authority of heaven and, and, of, and of earth all represented at the throne of God. He is forever his throne. Amen. Praise God. Notice it is that prayer that we're talking about that we can come boldly before the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy. We have the opportunity to come before the Lord and to come into his presence. That prayer is an approach of the soul right into the throne room of God. That prayer that we pray gives us access right to the throne room of heaven. Praise God. Amen. To think that we could come before his throne, the throne of an almighty God, that our simple words of prayer would bring us right before the throne of God and into his presence. First of all, let me just tell you, there is a throne of God, the throne. The Bible talks about it. Amen. In the book of Psalms, many times it represents and talks about God's throne and, and the uh, perpetual throne of God that it will always be there. He will always reign upon the throne. He is eternal. His reign is eternal. Amen. He will not be removed. He will not be replaced, but he will always be upon the throne. Amen. He will live and reign as King of kings and Lord of lords and reign supreme for all of eternity. There will never rise another authority that will, super, will supersede him. There will never rise another kingdom that will overthrow him. But he forever sits on his throne. Amen. Though no matter what happens on this earth, he will continue to reign on his throne. No matter what happens in your world, he will continue to reign upon the throne forever and ever and for all of eternity. Amen. No matter what angels may turn against him, amen, he will reign supreme upon his throne. Hallelujah. He is forever. His throne is eternal. His power is forever lasting. Hallelujah. The throne of God. Amen. Notice the position. It says that he is king of kings and lord of lords. Amen. That position, that title that is given to him. That he is king of all kings. He is lord of all lords. His throne is above every throne. When you read about and you, and you hear about the, the kings of this earth. And their thrones, and some of them have had glorious and some uh, magnificent thrones that they have sat upon. Even when you read about the palace, of Sol uh, the palace of Solomon and the throne of Solomon and all of the gold that decorated his throne and all the beauty that was with his throne. When you read about and hear about and and see pictures concerning, amen, the crowns of kings. And you've heard of the, like the crown jewels of the Queen of England. And you hear about all the beauty and the wealth and the riches and all of that. But listen, none of that even comes close, amen, to the one that sits upon the throne of all of eternity. Amen, the Father, Father God, amen, he sits on the throne for all of eternity. King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen, he far above all of her thrones and all other kings he reigns supreme supreme today. Hallelujah. His position is above all. Hallelujah. Praise God. His power is over all the world. Amen. He is such a king that the earth is just his footstool. He is such a mighty king Amen, his power is over all of the earth. And they say the President of the United States is the most powerful man in the world. That's what they say. Most powerful man in the world. Don't seem to be all that powerful when you think about it, does it? 
Don't, he don't really seem to be all that powerful, but they say he's the most powerful man in the world. But that, the power of the President of the United States and the power of that office of the President of the United States does not even come close to the power of the one that sits on the throne. That one that reigns supreme upon the throne. Amen. That one that is there, his power. Amen. Supersedes all powers. Amen. He has power over all of heaven and all of earth and even all of hell. Amen. His power is supreme. There is none that can that can overthrow the power of our God. Amen. The throne of God. It's a powerful throne. Amen. It's a throne that reigns. Amen. For eternity. Forever. It will not ever be diminished. Will not ever decline. Throughout the, throughout the world, there has been kingdoms that have risen and fallen. Thrones, that kings that have sat upon a throne and have been overthrown. Kings that have sat upon a throne and had power for a period of time. And therefore, and then their, their, their life ended or they, they died and, and they had to pass it off to somebody else. But can I tell you, amen, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, His power is forever. It is forever secure today. Amen. And He sits upon the throne of heaven. Hallelujah. Thank God for the throne of God. Amen. Notice, it is a throne of grace. It is a throne of grace. Hallelujah. When we think about it, amen, there is grace. The grace of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We have the privilege to come boldly before the throne of grace. Amen. That throne represents the grace of God. Amen, that throne is the place of the grace of God, that His grace would be extended to any of us that could find our way to the throne of God. Amen. I don't know, I don't know who you are today, but I know who I am. I know where I'm welcome, and I know where I'm not welcome. Right? You're not going to find me climbing over the fence of the White House and make it a mad dash for the front door. I know where I'm not welcome. I know where I don't belong. Right? You're not going to find me, man, knocking at the door of Buckingham Palace and expecting an audience with the queen. You know, because I, I know where I don't belong. I know where I'm not welcome. But one thing about this throne is it is a throne of the grace of God. Amen. A place that we can come before God. And we can come before His presence. And I know where I'm welcome. And I know that I am welcome before the throne of the Almighty God. The God of all the heaven and the God of the universe. Amen. I am welcome there. The throne of grace. Praise God that we can come before Him, before His throne. Praise God. Amen. When you put it all together, I mean, you know what? Grace sits on a throne. That God of grace, He sits on a throne. Amen. And that God of grace, He sits on the throne and He reigns supreme. And we have the privilege, and notice that verse says that we can come boldly. That we can come boldly before that throne. That we have the privilege, church, amen, to come before that throne of God. Amen. That we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Amen. Did you ever see somebody that was somewhere they did not belong? They come sheepishly, secretively, slyly. Because they know they don't belong there. They know they're in some place where they don't belong. You can see somebody that when they're, when they're somewhere they don't belong, they are uncomfortable. Right? Be honest. You're, you know, you're just about like, about, you're, you're pretty much all like me. 
But have you ever found yourself in a real classy restaurant? You ever found yourself in a real classy motel for whatever reason? You're kind of like watching over at the next table what fork they're using. You're kind of looking around to see what, you know, how much they're tipping the bellboy and how much they're, you know, what they're doing. You know why? Because we're not used to that kind of living, man. We're not used to it. I don't belong in that type of, I don't belong in that. Man, I'll carry my own bags. Get away. I'm not going to give you a dollar a bag. I'm going to carry my own suitcase. Hey, man, that's one of my wife. She'll help me. We'll carry our bags up there. And, you know, I, then, you, you know, you're used to going into your Motel 6 and taking your own fan with you. You're comfortable with that. But when you got to go into the higher regency and you're taking your old dirty fan with you and you're, you're carrying your own pillows and, and all of that, because you know why? You don't belong there. You don't fit in. That's not your style. That's not what you are. Amen. But when you go before the throne of grace, amen, you can come boldly before the throne of God. Why? Because you belong there. Amen. You can come with courage and, and with with boldness before him and asking him and calling out to him as Lord and God of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. I can come boldly before the Lord. Amen. There's some places I know I don't belong. Amen. But there's one place amen, that I belong. It's before the throne of God. Amen. That we that we who we are right now we can come before the God of grace that sits on the throne. That God that's merciful of all of our sins. That God that is mindful of all of our sin. And we can come boldly before Him. Hallelujah. We just talked about sin in Sunday school class. And let me tell you what, sin is bad business. Sin is bad business. Sin robs you. Sin takes it all from you. It's serious. It is serious. And it needs to be dealt with. We was talking about it, and we was talking about it in class. You know what? You can take somebody out in the world, and they can say, you know what? I'm just going to quit sinning. I'm just going to quit. I'm just not going to let it happen anymore in my life. Myself, this is my opinion. I think it's impossible to do that. Because I don't think you can do that without the help and the grace of God. I don't think you can do it without the help of the Spirit of God. And a work of the Holy Spirit in your life. That's the only way you can do that. Amen. And the only way you find that is to go before the, the throne of God. And say, God, forgive me. Lord, I'm a sinner. God, would you wash away my sin? Forgive me, Lord. Amen. Come before God. Amen. Come before the throne. Cast yourself before the throne. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. You're a sinner. You need forgiveness. You're a sinner. You need to go to the throne of grace. Grace sits on a throne. Hallelujah. The grace of God, it sits on a throne today. Amen. And we have the privilege that we can come before him. Amen. With a very simple prayer. Our prayer goes right up before the throne of God. And we say, God, would you forgive me? God, I'm sorry for my sin. Lord, I'm sorry. Would you forgive me? Amen. It goes before the throne of grace. The God of all the heaven. The God of all of eternity. The God of all power. The God that is above all and reigns above all. Amen. He hears the prayer. Amen. Of the lowliest of the low. Amen. He hears the prayer of a sinner. He fears the, hears the prayer of one that's far away from him come boldly to the throne today come boldly to the throne God forgive me God forgive me hallelujah you can find forgiveness today at the throne you can find forgiveness of all sin you know what sin serious business sin is serious man sin is a horrible thing You can go and you can say, I'm not going to sin no more, but I'm afraid you're going to fail. You can say, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get on a plane. I'm going to fly over to London, England. 
I'm going to go have an audience with the queen. And I'm going to have her help me and forgive me my sins. First of all, you won't get past the front door. And if you know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody, and you get past the front door, that queen's not going to be able to help you. You can say, well, they say the President of the United States is the most powerful man in the world. Maybe he can help me. He can't help you with sin. He can't help you with sin. If you, if you find, you know what, you go to the White House, you say, I want to see the President today. They're going to send you packing. But if you, you know, you can go to the White House and you can say, look, I've got a million dollars I want to give to the, to the president, to the real, you know, election campaign or to, the, to, his, to his cause or to the Democratic Party or whatever, that they might say, well, now let's let you talk to him. We'll give you five minutes. But that million dollars is still not going to get you forgiveness of your sins. But today, in a little church, on the wrong side of the tracks, Right? Hey man, with just a few people here, a bunch of just average Joes, excuse me, Joe, average Joe people, that's all we are, okay? If that's all we are, we're just, we're just average people, but in this place today, you can come before the throne of God, of heaven, and universe, the one that reigns supreme. And with a prayer from your heart, you can say, God, forgive me. God can forgive you of your sins. Hallelujah. You talk about a rest. Hallelujah. You can rest from all your sin. Stand with me if you would today. Praise God, you're here this morning. And say, what do I do about sin? What do I do about this sin? I believe that you can find forgiveness today. It's not coming before a pulpit or a podium. It's not coming before a palace. It's not coming before a president. But it's coming before the throne of grace. God's grace. Oh, yes, it is. Amen. Say, but Brother David... Will he reject me? Come boldly. Come boldly before God. Maybe my sins are such that he'll never forgive me. Can I tell you once again, come boldly. Come boldly before God. Maybe maybe God will save others, but he won't save me. Let me tell you, come boldly before the throne of grace. Come with expectancy. Come believing. Come, ready to confess. You'll find a God that's willing to forgive you, sitting on a throne. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's the glorious thing. When the God of the throne of heaven says, you're forgiven. Your sins are washed away. Amen. It's the highest authority. There is nobody that will ever repeal what the high throne has said. The God of that throne, when he forgives, you're forgiven. Friends may look on and say, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Amen, but listen, what God said, he says, you're forgiven. Amen, the power of that throne, the words of that throne. Amen, the mandates of that throne, the edicts of that throne. Amen, they supersede all power and all authority. And even when Satan himself comes against you and says you're a sinner, you're not saved, you've never been saved. Amen, you can say, no, Satan, I'll tell you what, I went before the throne of God. I went before the throne of grace. Amen, and when I went before the throne of God, I found forgiveness for my sin. And I'm all, it's all washed away. Hallelujah. Bow your heads with us if you would today. Dear Jesus, speak to the heart of someone today. Deal with somebody's heart, Lord God, that they'd find Christ this morning. They'd find forgiveness of their sin, Lord Jesus. God, we ask it in your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're here this morning and you need to find forgiveness. Say, Brother David, I know I'm a sinner. I know I need forgiveness. Amen. Can I come before the throne of God? Yes, you can. Amen. But you're here today. You say, Brother David, what do I need to do? 
very simple, just call out to the Lord, God, forgive me. God, forgive me. Your prayer goes right in before the throne of God. Hallelujah. If you're here today and you'd like to give your heart to the Lord, would you lift your hand? Amen. You would like to ask Jesus in your heart. God bless you. God bless you. Is there another? Lift your hand. Say, Brother David, pray for me today. Pray with me today. I'd like for Jesus to come into my heart. I'd like for Jesus to come into my life. God bless you. Amen. Will you lift your hand and say, Brother David, pray for me. I want to find forgiveness of sin. I realize it's serious business, and I need my sins to be washed away. I need my sins to be gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God, for dealing with the hearts of your people today. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, let us come boldly before the throne of God. God, for those, Lord God, that find sin in their life today, let them find forgiveness, I pray, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Church, would you come to the altar this morning? Those that lifted your hand, would you make your way to the front of this church? Amen. Come and let me pray with you. Come to this altar today. Let's pray together. Let's call out to the Lord. Let's find forgiveness of our sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the holy of holies, I can kneel and make my petition known. I can go. Just a common man Because of God's redemption plan I can only approach the Because of God's redemption plan, I can boldly approach the throne. Oh, I can go into the holy of holies. I can kneel and make my petition known. I can go into the the holy of holies, and though I'm just a common man, because of God's redemption plan, I can boldly approach. 